The world's biggest nuclear power is France, where 58 nuclear power plants generate 72% of the nation's electricity. Two of France's most important nuclear power plants came into service in Flamanville in 1986. The third is on its way. Vanessa goes running every morning before work. She runs along the seafront, which is only 300 meters from the Flamanville nuclear plant. How is it possible to go jogging to improve your health when you're living right next to a nuclear power plant? Isn't she worried? Not at all. I'm doing sports since four years now and all around the nuclear power plant and it doesn't matter uh, if I'm running here or um, somewhere else. The reason Vanessa's words come as a surprise is the common belief that nuclear power plants pollute the environment. But is that true? Are the lives of the residents who live close to nuclear power plants in danger? Nuclear power plants heat water to produce energy. The heat produced during nuclear fission in the reactor core is used to boil water into steam, which turns the turbine blades. As the turbine blades turn, they drive generators that make electricity. Nuclear energy has one of the lowest impacts on the environment of any energy source because it does not emit air polluting carbon dioxide. So Vanessa is right not to worry. Her lungs are free from carbon dioxide. But what about radiation? In nuclear power plants, when the uranium atoms, which are used as fuel, are split, it's true that these newly formed atoms give out radiation. Interestingly, there's also background natural radiation everywhere in our environment. It comes from space, the sun, and from naturally occurring radioactive materials contained in the earth and in living things. It's even in our food, potatoes, bananas, and even water. All carry small doses of radiation. Bruno Combi is a well-known environmental engineer who points out that the human body actually needs radiation up to a certain level. Uh, radiation is absolutely necessary just as we need for our own health. We need some amount of solar radiation from the sun. And if you don't have it, then you will have a vitamin D deficiency. So we need some sun, some radiation, but we also need some radiation from radioactive decay of natural elements. Radiation is a part of our daily lives, even if we are not aware of it. Medical x-rays, air travel, even cigarettes. But what's interesting is the exposure level. The acceptable amount of radiation for a human being per year is one millisievert. The amount of radiation that a person living close to a nuclear power plant receives is 0.01 millisieverts. This is a 20th of the dose a smoker intakes through smoking. A single CT scan of the abdomen could give a dose of 11 millisieverts. This is 1100 times more than the level that is safe for humans. This means Vanessa should have a long and healthy life. Even if you're not running in the mornings to improve your fitness, there are others whose health is even more important than your own. Most families living in Flamanville take their children to the ROC Sports Center, which is just 400 meters away from the nuclear power plant. Why should playing rugby in the open air be harmful? We're not breathing in polluted air. At our rugby school here, 150 kids between the ages of 5 and 14 train here twice a week. Most of them live around here. We don't experience any negative effects from living close to a nuclear power plant. We wouldn't even be aware that we live next to a nuclear power plant if we already didn't know it was here. For 20 years I've been living close to it, less than a kilometre away. Living close to it poses no danger to me. Charlie, Nino, Martin and Watson 
These children train for one hour every day in the open air. The building right behind them is the Flamanville Nuclear Energy Plant. It's been a tough training session, so they take a break and go inside to catch their breath. This team have been champions many times, winning victories over rival teams. Now it's time to have a quick bite. The menu consists of a sandwich, with bread that's made from wheat grown in the region and with fish caught from the sea nearby. But is this food, taken from the fields and water, close to the region's nuclear plant, completely healthy? Louis and Michel Roland are brothers who own a 100 hectare farm closest to the nuclear power plant. They are very proud of what they grow. Our products are used in the manufacture of quality food. Our dairy is famous for that, Contenton's milk experts. So is it possible to consume the famous Contenton products without worrying? We know that the nuclear power plants do not spread dangerous levels of radiation in surrounding areas. But there is also a matter of storing the nuclear waste. Does this waste leak into the earth, water, and therefore harm crops? This is the Andra Nuclear Waste Storage Facility. Nuclear waste is neither particularly hazardous nor hard to manage when compared to other toxic industrial waste. It is actually considered to be environmentally friendly. For instance, the nuclear waste produced by a family of four people throughout their whole lives from the use of nuclear power is equal to just a tiny golf ball. Used fuel is normally stored underwater for cooling for at least five years and then often put into dry storage. During the final stage, the nuclear waste is kept at deep geological levels, varying from 500 to 1,000 meters. The spokesperson for the French National Radioactive Waste Management Agency, Sarah Devonc, and her team are researching the possibility of the reversible geological disposal of high-level, long-life, and intermediate-level radioactive waste. This is long-lived intermediate-level radioactive waste. Our aim is to protect people in the long run. The project is based on the clay's capacity to contain the waste. Vong emphasizes that she believes a radioactive leak is impossible. It would take 300,000 years for radioactive elements to be released from a 70-meter thick layer of clay. And even in that scenario, the level of radioactivity reaching the people would be much lower than the natural levels already in the environment. I live nine kilometers away from this facility and feel very safe. When you have a nuclear power plant, the basic rule is that everything is confined inside the nuclear reactor, nothing comes out. So you can still produce your organic vegetables, even though you're on the, on the piece of land just nearby the nuclear power plant. So this is a very strong and positive aspect of nuclear power. In France, nuclear checks frequently take place. Tests are carried out every two to three months. Milk is stringently tested. Both the veterinary health department and independent organizations check if the milk is okay. We're sure the nuclear power plant has no negative impact. Our milk is mixed with milk from other regions. If there was a problem, the milk from this region would have been collected separately. We come in the morning and bring the fishing worms with us, then we carry them all on board. After that we go fishing for almost 7 hours. We catch 400 cases of fish. 
we end up with 7 to 8 kilos of lobster and 30 kilos of crabs per night every season. That's how our days are. There's a small beach right behind that corner. We swim there in summer. There are always around 40 people who swim there. I visit this beach with my three kids. The nuclear power station hasn't created any danger so far and we're definitely not affected by it in a negative way. So many tests and inspections are done that it almost seems impossible. So can Charles and his friends eat their sandwiches without having to worry? France has been living hand in hand with nuclear power plants for more than half a century. But some people are against them. All discussions about nuclear power plants revolve around the health of children. The number one worry is whether it increases the possibility of cancer. Former European Parliament Vice Chair of the Committee on Energy, Research and Technology and Flamanville resident Didi Anja is an anti-nuclear activist and an artist at the same time. His works reinterpret famous artists' works, but with a nuclear twist. He never consumes any food or sea products from this region. He has them delivered from another part of France, La Manche. The reason he's against nuclear power plants is his concerns regarding children's health. It's commonly known there is childhood leukemia and thyroid cancer in this region. It's officially denied that the cause is the nuclear power plant. It is agreed that the number of cases of childhood leukemia are high, but it's denied that the real reason is the existence of the nuclear power plants. The mayor of Flamanville, Patrick Fouchon, says they have mobilized scientists to answer the question of residents. In the 80s, the concern about the risk of childhood leukemia had its grounds. These are our kids. The parents of children who lived in this region were the ones who demanded information. It was the duty of the elected officials to do what they had to do in order to provide the answers. The instant that there was a question raised regarding the health of the children, we immediately acted on it and demanded answers and opinions from scientists. Whenever someone has a question, they're automatically labeled as anti-nuclear. But in my opinion, every question deserves to be answered. This is one of the most delicate situations in this region. Dr. Francois Rousseau is a family doctor who's been working in this region for 40 years. He's one of the experts local authorities turn to for new research, data and information. I started as an intern in Sherbu Hospital. We were a group of doctors with a lot of questions about nuclear energy. Four of us came together and formed a group, the aim being to record the data and results of our research. At the beginning it was just a local record that later became nationwide and was registered. Now every year we present our findings to the board. I am a doctor who specifically registers the effect the nuclear power plant has on people living around the Monche region. The results so far indicate that the nuclear power plant poses no health risks for the people living close by. Earlier there had been some research that suggested it did, but this was later proven wrong. The risk right now is the same as in any other part of France. So according to Dr. Rousseau, Charles and his friends can eat their sandwiches made with local products without worrying. Ozef Hervé has worked in the food sector for more than 20 years and is the owner of the restaurant L'Esquelle d'Ilette. Every day, he serves his special dishes to his customers. He buys the food from local producers.
Our clients prefer that the products are from this region rather than imported from Germany or Belgium. They prefer oysters that are gathered from Barfleur, which is only 30 kilometers from here. The same goes for potatoes and our dairy ice cream. As they prefer local products, we buy goods like milk and cheese from local producers from this region. The nuclear power plant has improved Hervé's business. He sometimes has up to 400 customers a day. Since the construction of the new nuclear plant started, our profit has increased by 50%. Our customers are not worried about the origin of the products, nor the nuclear power plant just one kilometer away. According to Hervé, the reason his business is doing so well is not just his talents as a chef, but the development of the region because of the nuclear power plant. The nuclear power plant has attracted money to this region. You can notice that in how advanced the infrastructure is. Sports centers, public swimming pools, health centers, it has had a positive financial impact. If Flamanville nuclear power plant and Cherbourg nuclear submarine were not here, this place would be an economic desert. To be able to understand how nuclear power plants have contributed to France's economy, we need to take a trip into the country's past. So the reason why France historically developed nuclear energy is that we don't have any um, fossil resources. We don't have oil, we don't have gas, we don't have coal. Nuclear energy has a long history in France. It first started being used in the 1950s. In the beginning, it had joint civil and military branches. In 1973, the oil crisis caused the cost of oil to increase. France had no oil resources of its own. And with no renewable energy, except hydroelectricity at the time, the country decided to gain its energy independence through nuclear energy. France decided to have a program of 58 nuclear reactors. It took 20, about 25 years, 26 years, to build those 58 reactors. Today, you can see the contribution that nuclear energy has had on France's economy. In 1970, uh, nearly 70% of our production was coming from uh, fossil fuel, and now it's, less, it's about 5%. The first way is that it provides uh, low-cost energy. There are three ways why uh, a country would choose uh, nuclear energy. There is a price of electricity, there is a security of supply, and there's also industrial development. So if you take the example of France, um, uh, we have today uh, some of the low cost of electricity in Europe. You can see the abundance of energy that nuclear energy provides in Flamanville. The nuclear power plant has helped the economy boom and increased employment in the region. The best part of having a nuclear power plant in the region is that it has increased employment. If you're in a remote part of the country, in the rural areas, you can only stay there if you can continue to make a living. If you can't, you pack up your things and you move elsewhere to find work. We're lucky because we're able to continue living here. A lot of people have moved to Flamanville for work. It's brought new infrastructure, sports centers, new roads. People are able to enjoy their hobbies. Flamanville is the first choice for many people who are looking for a job and want to provide their family and children with a prosperous future. Seljuk Karajan's father moved to Flamanville from Turkey with his wife and children in 1981 to work on the construction of the Flamanville nuclear power plant. It wasn't a surprise when Seljuk began to follow in his father's footsteps. I applied to work in the power plant, but it wasn't easy, as I had to pass many aptitude tests over six months. I've been working here for two years now. But the idea of living next to a nuclear power plant worried his wife, Esma. She was not sure if it was safe for her and her family. The main reason was the nuclear accidents that had happened in the past, like Chernobyl and Fukushima. I told her that in France, there's no such problem. I googled information and shared it with her. I tried to explain France really takes nuclear safety very seriously. Would Selchuk and his wife live happily ever after together, or would nuclear energy drive them apart?
The reason behind the hesitation that people can have is the nuclear power plant disasters that have happened in the past. Nuclear power plant disasters, radiation released in high doses, and winds spreading it quickly around the atmosphere, seriously polluting the environment and causing cancer. Even worse, it changes people's DNA. The three biggest nuclear power plant disasters are the Three Mile Island accident in 1979, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor disaster in 1986, and the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident that was triggered by the tsunami set off by the Tohoku earthquake in 2011. It takes thousands of years for the damage caused by a nuclear power plant accident to clear, especially the radiation. And this possibility is what scares everyone the most. Former French Minister for the Environment, Corinne Lapouge, has an anti-nuclear stance, the possibility of accidents being her main concern. 40, 50 years ago, when France first started to build nuclear power plants, there was an important study by nuclear engineering professor Rasmussen, which became very popular. He researched and later stated that nuclear accidents could only happen every 22,000 years. But there have been two major accidents in just the past 40 years. The type of accident that can happen has happened in 1979. It was the Three Mile Island plant in the United States. And in 1979, it, it, the core has melted, exactly the same time of accident as Chernobyl or Fukushima. But it was a Western type of plant with a concrete containment around it. So all the radiation remained contained in the containment and there was zero injured and zero person who died from radiation. Reactors we build today are very different from the reactors that were built in the early years. Chernobyl, no containment. Many people died. Fukushima, with a containment, but much too small. Nobody died, but there was an important rejection of the radiation in the environment. But no cancers and no people died from radiation. And with the reactors we have today, with the very thick containments, yes, we will have another accident. I'm convinced we will. And that's the reason we have to build those very thick containments. The principle of nuclear safety is twofold. First, you try to identify your potential risks and you, uh, you prepare for against those risks, right? For instance, you anticipate the biggest possible wave or the biggest possible earthquake, and you, 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 you create the environment to protect against this risk. Improving technology and risk assessments is the key to achieving nuclear safety. But does this mean zero risk? Uh, if the question is, will there be another nuclear accident? As an environmentalist, and just with common sense, my answer is yes, there will be another accident. If the question is, will the accident kill a large number of people or not? Then the answer is no, it will not kill a large number of people anymore. Because the reactors we build today are very different from the reactors that were built in the early years. The world is preparing for fourth generation reactors, the result of what has been learned from past nuclear disasters. They have thicker shells and higher protective levels. The new advanced technology, effective safety measures, frequent tests and communication between official and private institutions and the public with clear and transparent information have contributed to the future of nuclear power plants. But they've also meant a happy ending to a love story. Selchuk and Esma have now been happily married for 10 years. Frankly, I'm very happy. It's a great place to be and raise my children. I was worried in the beginning, but we haven't experienced any problems from the nuclear power plant. I feel totally safe now. And that feeling of safety goes a long way. Now her initial fears have proved groundless. 
she knows her children can grow up with little fear of nuclear meltdown. And so too can many other children around the world with their parents happy and the knowledge that today's nuclear industry is a whole lot safer.